Hi, this is Dr. Friedman. This video is an explanation of the grid in Soundtrap. So you'll see that I've got the uh, grid laid out here and some lines drawn in that you won't see normally in Soundtrap. So this uh, blue line, the thick blue lines represent the big beats. So you, this is the first beat and you'll see the number one represents the first measure. This is the second beat of the first measure, the third the fourth beat of the first measure. And here's measure two. Uh, there's a number two under there, and you'll see I made a big line to distinguish the big measures. And the second beat of the second measure, the third beat, and the fourth beat, and here is measure three. Notice, please, that the grid size I've chosen is one eighth note. So the dotted lines along the grid here are the eighth notes. So this would be the first beat right on the beat. And this dotted line represents halfway between the first beat and the second beat and then so forth throughout these two measures. So I want to explain to you what happens when you uh, see when you have a quarter note. So I'm going to draw in what would be the standard music notation for a quarter note would land exactly right there on the beat. And here would be the next quarter note would land exactly on the beat and then the second and here's the third and then the fourth would be a quarter note exactly on the beat. And so that's how they land. When you look at them in a, a view like uh, the graphic notation, a quarter note would last this long. And it would fill up the whole measure. So that would be filled in. I won't draw them all out, but you get the idea. So when you look at a quarter note, this lands on the beat and lasts the whole measure. And so that's what the grid view for quarter notes is. If I were to look at eighth notes, uh, an eighth note is drawn. One single eighth note looks like this. It looks like a quarter note, but then you hang a flag off of it. Remember the rule for flags is every time you add a flag, you take the value of the note and you divide it in half. So one eighth note represents half of a quarter note. So if I had consecutive, which means running them together one after the other, eighth notes, I would have two like this. Now we don't usually draw consecutive eighth notes out with flags. Instead what we do is we replace the flag with something called a beam. And so when you have the beam with the eighth notes like this, one beam instead of, instead of the one flag per eighth note, it ties these two together. It's sort of like the way you would read words, right? You say cat, right? In you don't put them together like this, right? You don't have words that say cat in the hat, just like this. No, what do we do? We put the words together so that we can see them grouped together and separated by a little bit of a space so that it makes things easier to read as we go along. And so you just group and you, your eye grabs the one word cat in the, and you just read it. When you're little, you had to spell this out, right? Cat. But now you just grab the word with your eye. The same is true when you go to read music notation. Your eye grabs things in terms of not words, but usually in terms of beats. So vocalists might see this if I were to see some written words under here, like one syllable, like a, le, lu, ya, would be nicely done if I had each one of these eighth notes individual for each one of the syllables of the word. So that's why you might see individual eighth notes. So for us, we're going to look at consecutive eighth notes look like this. So what happens if I want to do more than consecutive eighth notes? Well, if I want to do sixteenth notes, you just have to put your note heads in between because sixteenth notes run this way. You can change the grid in Soundtrap so that you can look at all the lines and all the boxes for 16th notes. Uh, but if I were to draw four consecutive 16th notes, yes, you guessed it, they probably would be flags, individual flags. Remember the rule for the flag is I take a note with one flag. What's that, an eighth note? And when I add another flag to it, it divides that note in half. So then I have two sixteenths inside the same space that I would have had one eighth. Of course, using the same idea that we used before, where I would have, instead of flags, I would instead use beams. I'm going to draw in my sixteenth notes and just draw them in this way and use two beams instead of one beam. And so each one of these goes faster. So we can say one, two, three, four, one and two and 
three E and a, four E and a. And if you use rhythm states, I use the words Maine, 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 Utah, Utah, Mississippi, Mississippi. And I'll just show you how that looks, each one of these. The length, if we look at the graphic notation, eighth notes, is half the value, right, of a quarter note. And a sixteenth note is even shorter still. So rhythm means duration of sound. So this would be what an eighth note looks like, one on top of the other, and this would be what a sixteenth note looks like. So each one gets smaller and shorter still. Maine, Maine, Utah, Utah, Mississippi, Mississippi. And that's how they fit.